we attended that many shows and events and people was always saying to us, would you please bring out a, uh, you know, a flavoured cider? So that's what sort of got us thinking then. And um, we launched the rhubarb and honey one first, which was a great success. And then we brought out the berry blast. So they're the only two flavoured ones that we have now. And then of course we have the still and the sparkling apple juice and the apple cider vinegar and they're doing really well now as well. Our first show was St Patrick's Weekend in Oma. Yeah. And we went, oh, the van was filled with throat. We thought, <laughs> and the whole family was there to help the bag. We got some shock. <laughs> <laughs> we come home, we said, we'll never shift these 800 bottles. But, but the frost has attacked a lot of the bloom. So okay. Dad and I went out and checked the bloom. And if there's a cluster there, and if you've won bloom, that's still alive, you're quite lucky. <laughs> right. You can see I'm missing a tooth, that's just uh, not doing the brickwork right one night. <laughs> I think um, I think if we've, we've got through what we've got through, I think we'll stay together now for an hour <laughs> while. You've just been listening to the voices of Catherine and Pat McKeever and their son Peter from their family business Long Meadow Cider in Portadown. I had the pleasure of meeting them on a lovely sunny day a few weeks ago at the orchard where they gave me a tour and told me all about the family business and the process of growing the apples and picking them and storing them before they produce their wonderful products. We talked about how cider has evolved over the years and become a delicious craft product that they produce um, at Long Meadow Cider. Catherine and Pat, um, it's very nice to meet you. The first thing I want to ask you is how you both are, because I believe you've been, you, 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 were, you were hit with the COVID and you end, both ended up in hospital. Just give us a little, how are you? We're both well, Elaine, thank God. Um, yes, we did come through it. Um, but I don't think we were as bad now as what a whole lot of other people were. You know, we did a lot of um, our suffering at home, as what a lot of people did do. But then it just got to the stage where we knew we just needed that wee bit of extra help. So Pat went in before me and he got home. And then I decided, well, you've went in. So <laughs> a lot of days later, I ended up in myself. Um, but we were lucky enough, we were only in for two or three days and we were out again. We got some oxygen. And That's what I was going to ask you. Did you need to go on the ventilators? We weren't on the ventilators, no, just just the oxygen um, and um, it was very you know it was very brief we weren't on it that long uh, we got tablets and that um, Pat he was on, on a drip but um, the staff in there were absolutely amazing you know what I mean whereabouts were you? Craig Avon area hospital and what was the hospital like was it busy? With- uh, when we were in <clears throat> it wasn't too bad there was about I think 13 to 15 people in that time that was the lowest that had been in a long time yeah. so it wasn't too bad thank God yeah this, the staff themselves said, you know what I mean, that this was a lull. If it had been in the week previous, um, they said it was absolutely packed. So um, I suppose for any time it were to go in, we had it at the right time because it was so quiet, you know. Yeah, and now you have um, your natural immunity, but you got vaccinated as well. We did. We had to get, um, we wanted to get the vaccine just as well, just to be safe, but we have our own antibodies not built up now. But we wanted to get our vaccine, so at least we have the first one in us. Yeah. And how did it affect the, did it affect the business at all? Was it, There wasn't any outbreak or anything in the business? It's just oh, no, no, no. There was nothing in the business at all. Um, and we managed great because our son, Peter, is very much involved in the business, so he sort of just took over. Um, and because Pat and me was out of action for maybe I'd say a good what two or three weeks mm-hmm. month um, so he took over um, deliveries went on production went on so we were very fortunate to have him yeah this is a, a, a very much a family business you've been in business for about 50 years or so but you've you, I know you diversified into the, the yeah. cider yeah. in 2014 yeah so um, I suppose you can tell me how all that came about I mean whose idea well, we're, that? we're going now, as you said, over 50 years. We're third generation apple growers, so it was Pat's father that really started the whole thing off. Um, you know, and from then, you know, when Pat's father passed away, Pat obviously took over the, the farming end, the apple farming. Uh, and then after that, about what, 2014, as you say, Alien, we started into the, the cider business. But, you know, the apple business goes back a long, long time. You know, Pat's father would have been doing the canon mm-hmm. than that. Can like uh, there was three brothers and they worked at the can years ago, and then they, they started to grow the apples. It just took from there. So then yeah, you, so. you mean you started off with probably with one orchard, I guess. We started off with the home orchard, and then uh, 
20, 28 years ago I started to rent orchards. About seven, eight years ago I had a lot of orchards. We have cut back and uh, still still we have over about roughly 80 acres now, so it's enough. That's about, about 200 orchards or something like that altogether? Uh, no, in Armagh there's over, uh, I think there's roughly about five, five and a half thousand acres, I think. Okay. So there is, uh, there's roughly 300 growers, so there is. Right, that's a lot. It is, it is, it is. That's, you've definitely come, come, mm-hmm. come a long way. And what would be the main apples that you would grow? Uh, Bramley. 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 Yeah. Well, it's the PGI Bramley apple, yeah. That's been the majority of our crop here. And yeah. that's what the cider is made out of? We left on a selection on a variety of our sweet apples as well. It just wouldn't be all Bramley because the Bramley is a quite sharp, acidic um, apple. So we, we do have to do, you know, with our own recipes and our own blends. So, you know, we would bring in then the sweet apples as well. Yeah, and you've got some lovely names for your ciders. We do. Well, t- tell, tell me the names of your ciders now. There's, there's, there's the uh, berry... The Berry Blast Very and the Rhubarb and Honey would bar two flavoured ones. I mean, that just makes my mouth water. Tingle, doesn't it? Yeah. It just tingles. Um, this is Peter's just arrived in here. This is her son. Hi, Peter. Hello. How are you? How's things? The best, thanks. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm just getting going here now and i um, going to have a look around look around the orchard. But um, um, Catherine and Pat have been telling me all about the the business and the, the family end of it. So I suppose now that you're here, um, was it your choice to get, um, you know, to to keep the business going? Or, you know, was there any... Well, I Did you have any <laughs> any choice in the matter of being involved in the family <laughs> business? Is, I suppose what I'm trying to ask you. Well, no, I had came home from school and I didn't go to university or college as such. And then mum and dad had basically said that we should diversify into something else as opposed to growing the apples on their own so we decided to make cider first and it worked and it has progressed really well since with the shows and the furs and the events started off with the cider and then we started making apple juice as well and the cider and the vinegar, vinegar then yeah. too yeah yeah and I, su- I suppose you being the the young member of the family um definitely i think you know you're you're the the brand like the whole craft thing and the whole you know the logo and the the names and everything ha- having being young like it must be you know an influence you must influence that in terms of knowing what young people like because craft beers and craft everything is very very popular yeah. has been in recent years like it has been like even get people would message you through like the instagram page or yeah even things like instagram social and stuff media. Like that. i'm sure yeah. it's probably yeah. a lot of it's to do with you knowing you know it's that, that end of yeah, things. Yeah, no, absolutely. And you can get different ideas off social media as well, so you do. But it's it's mostly through people as well. People do ask some very funny, strange questions, <laughs> but they do make you think. It's a it's a great it's a great outlet too. So it is, yeah. 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 And who came who came, who came up with the names for the for the ciders? It was us as a family. I think, I think it, we're yeah. always sitting down at the table. Yeah, it is. We're always discussing. Like there's there's the three of us here now, but with four daughters as well, who would also help us out in the business, especially for doing the farm tours and that too, and doing events and that. Um, but no, I think we sort of just come up with the, with the names ourselves. You know, the first two we brought out was the medium cider and the blossom burst. Uh, and we ran with and them the Blossom for, Burst won award um, yeah, yeah. It, it, has won, it has won the Great Taste Award and the Blast and Her and Irish Food and Drink Awards as well um, so they were the two main ones that we initially started off with and we ran with those maybe for a couple of years just and then we introduced um, Pat wanted to do a dry oak aged cider where the, the cider was actually matured in oak whiskey barrels uh, and that was our oak aged one now it would be our limited edition one we don't we make it in, in very small quantities just and then we does brought that out make it more popular then because it's harder to get? It does make it that bit more popular, yes. Uh, and then we do make it, as I said, in smaller quantities, so it's not always going to be readily available. And uh, we just can't take it out of the casks just because we've run out of stock. You know, so there's going to be times of the year where it's not available just because it's not ready. Uh, and then we brought out the two flavoured ones. And uh, I think, as, as Peter said, it was because we attended that many shows and events and people was always saying to us, would you please bring out a, uh, you know, a flavoured cider? So that's what sort of got us thinking then. And um, we launched the rhubarb and honey one first, which was a great success. And then we brought out the berry blast. So they're the only two flavoured ones that we have now. And then, of course, we have the still and the sparkling apple juice and the apple cider vinegar and they're doing really well now as well yeah because um you know this all being very um organic and um you know the small everything is you know made from scratch made from it's all made from scratch but your um your vinegar um 
has, is very popular. Um, and I was reading something about um, mother, the, the mother. Can you explain mm-hmm. that? Yeah, the mother is the natural bacteria that's within um, the apple cider vinegar. So, you know, we would have people that would be drinking it there for health reasons, you know, if they've cholesterol problems or arthritic pain, joint pain. We've even people on it that would um, swear a bed for weight loss. Oh, really? So, yeah. <laughs> we'll all be on it now. The COVID's still. <laughs> we can get rid of that with a bit of vinegar. Um, yes, so as, as you had said, ours is very natural. It's, it's a pure, raw, unfiltered, unpasteurised apple cider vinegar with simply nothing in it, only our own homegrown apples. We don't add anything else to it. So there's no water in it, there's no sugars in it. So it is completely natural. Um, and it's fantastic there for cooking with as well. Like we would have chefs that would be using it there as well. Um, so it's fantastic there for marinating with, for cooking, for pickling. You know, so it's a very versatile uh, product, and it's a great wee cupboard, a great wee product to have in your in your kitchen cupboard. Yeah, and it's good. You were saying like for you know skin conditions and everything, Eczema, all sorts of dermatitis. Yeah, and we've heard all the stories. You know, really because people would come back to us when we are at events and things like that. You know, so we're hearing it first hand from people. You know, the effects that it has had and the benefits they have found from taking it. Yeah, because there probably isn't that many products like that on the market. I mean, I suppose most things like that would have additives and have, you know, to have the natural, the natural ingredient like that, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's probably quite a rarity. Yeah, yeah. Now, there's no real scientific evidence to say that it does what it does, you know, so we're not claiming that it does X, Y or Z. But this but is just we're anecdotally going, you're yeah, hearing. Yeah, we're going by the feedback that we're receiving from our customers. You know, so you know we've been getting um, we've been getting great feedback from it. Yeah, and you had a huge um, success recently with Amazon. Mm-hmm. Um, Amazon are starting to um, advertise your product. So yeah, that's that's yeah. that's a massive thing for any business. Yeah, no, we were delighted with that. Um, that all started off really. I think it's probably a mixture of um, COVID and Brexit. Because when you were weren't getting the sales um, that we would have got um, really down to COVID and we had to move to online sales. Now, unfortunately, with the NA licensing laws, um, we're not allowed to sell from our own premises. So we had to go through uh, an intermediary and we used um, Copper Star. And that come about through a friend and neighbour called um, Ren McCracken. McCracken's real ale. He does his own craft beers. And Ren was listed with them, so... Um, and he's local as he's well. He's local as well. Yeah. He's only over the road from us. And Ren made the introduction for us, which was brilliant. And that's really how we got how we got on board with Copper Star. So it means now that the ciders are available um, on Amazon. They're available through our own website, which obviously links you then to the Copper Star um, yeah. online page. And uh, we do the deliveries and that ourselves. But it's given us access to um, the GB market, which we wouldn't have, yes, we had. Yeah, because we they had, wouldn't have heard of you, you know. Yeah, well, they have their own craft ciders. Mm-hmm. When you think how many over in Somerset, like they have all their own craft ciders. Yeah. So obviously they're supporting their own local growers and that and producers. But it has given us, it has opened a doorway for us to allow us into the GB market that maybe just wasn't there before. Yeah, because I suppose obviously with COVID, you know, when all the bars and restaurants and everything are shut down, you know, that would have been your bread and butter. You... you we, did you sell a lot to places like that? Oh, we did. Restaurants Hospitality and bars. Hospitality was our was a big one for us. You know, we were in a lot of the big um, the big hotels and restaurants like Locker and Resort had all of our products. You know, um, so when hospitality closed, it meant we lost hotels, bars, restaurants. What about supermarkets? Did you sell to supermarkets? Uh, we're in Sainsbury's. Yeah, well, that's so a big Sainsbury's one. was was a good outlet for us as well because it meant then you know our customers not could at least go to Sainsbury's. It's doing um, well there, it's nice and steady. Yeah, it's doing really well in there, and they also have the apple cider vinegar as well. Um, oh, do they? I must pick some do, of that up. Yeah, <laughs> they have the apple cider vinegar too. And then we were really reliant on farm shops really because they got this chance to open up. Um, so we were reliant on that and off sales, and then um, the supermarket and that as well, just to try to keep the business ticking along. Yeah. And what about in terms of um, the actual keeping the business going in terms of, you know, when is your your harvest is in August and September. Mm-hmm. So how how did that work out with COVID? Hey, well, work, we got workers in last year, no problem. Uh, Do you have any migrant workers that come over? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Would you? I I was reading somewhere about Keelings being very concerned. You know, Keelings the strawberries. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, they they are very worried about getting their migrant workers over, um, in case they have to isolate and then having to in the mm. south, especially like paying for hotels. I don't yeah. know what the situation is here with that. Is that a worry for you? Well, we don't know what's going to happen this year. Like you know, we're actually talking to them now at the moment, and they're wanting to know what the crops like. We can't tell them what the crops like yet. Because it's August and September. It's, it's August. Isn't it? Well, your first batch would come in say the end of July to do a bit of summer pruning. We always bring in, say, maybe five or six then. And then when they come in, they tell the rest back home, yes, your crops could come on over. Okay. You'll always, but, you, but plenty, there will be workers come in. It's just uh, what way they're going to come in, we don't know yet. Yeah. Uh, we are talking to them at the minute. They're trying to, they're looking to book flights and all to see. But if they come in, like, we can isolate them on the farm. Yeah. You know, like, uh, we're lucky uh, to isolate them on this farm. We can keep them working on the home farm before they go out anywhere else. And we, you know, uh, we can go and get them the food. We've done that last year, supplied them with a lot of groceries for so many days. Yeah. We'll, do, we'll do the same in the year again, so hopefully the same crew comes back again. And has Brexit affected you, um, because you're a food product, does that affect you um, having to importing or exporting or anything like that? Is um... I think it was more scary at the very beginning. It was very, very daunting at the beginning, I think, for a lot of businesses because nobody really knew what was happening. Uh, and there was a lot of legislation out there and you were attending webinars and Zoom meetings and everything else and the legislation kept changing, so you never really knew what was happening. But we got all our paperwork in place, as a lot of companies did beforehand, so it wasn't really as daunting for us when January did come round. I think it's worse for those companies moving goods from GB to NA as opposed to NA to GB. Yeah. So we are okay in that respect. What about to the to the to the south? Do you do you move products between the north and the south? We Does do. That? Yeah, yeah. No, but as I said, we had all in place. Okay. You know, so that's running smoothly enough for us. We haven't come across any issues as yet. And then um, there's the Trader Support Service who are absolutely fantastic. You know what I mean? If anybody has any problems or issue, it's only a matter of, you know, it's, I, I would be sent to anybody to get registered with them because that's a backup service that you have. So should there be any problems, you know what I mean? They can guide you and advise you and, and help you in, in the right way that you should be going. Yeah. Um, about, you know, when you started off in this business, um, what was it like at the beginning for you? <laughs> Oh, wouldn't want to go there again <laughs> <laughs> definitely was, not it was scary well you're still married yeah. <laughs> oh we're still married just about like, just about you can see I'm missing the truth that's just uh, not doing the book work right one night <laughs> I think um, I think if we've, we've got through what we've got through I think we'll stay together now for an hour <laughs> while <laughs> it was scary at the start there's no point in saying that it wasn't um, and I remember the very first batch we made was only something like 800 bottles and I remember seeing all the bottles and thinking, how and under God are we going to get rid of all this, this cider that we have made? And, and saying that, you know, a lot of it we made, we weren't selling it. It was going out as samples round places. But it was funny, like it really did, it, it took off. It, took, it, it took sort of, off, it, it really did, it surprised us. But it took me a year, like, you know, it was hard work driving all around the north. Like, you know, you're and are you literally road. going and knocking on doors? That's what we, that's what we don't do, I start. Our yeah. first show, our first show was St Patrick's weekend in Oma, yeah. and we went. Oh, the van was filled. So we thought, <laughs> and the whole family is there to help the bag. Right <laughs> we got some shock. <laughs> <laughs> we come home. We said we'll never shift these eight hundred bottles. But so you, hold on, you had eight hundred bottles in the van when you went to Oma. No, I didn't. No, it didn't take the <laughs> We took so many cases, and we started to stack up. We were there first ones. We were there real early. But and did you get rid of any? Well, oh, we, we did, did. We did. We did. But. Uh, the idea was going there and then knocking on bars, but it was hard, like because the bars they were all sticking to the big, the big suppliers, you know. And it was very hard because we were trying to do it ourselves without a distributor then. But then uh, we got we took a distributor on board, and it took me a year. But it looks like anything. Do you think that you definitely needed to get a distributor? Oh, you oh, do. Without, you do a without a doubt. doubt. Without a doubt, and like we've um, we've a great distributor, Rob Brothers Wine, wine Merchants. And they have all of our products, so they have the whole, all the ciders and the apple juice and the apple cider vinegar. Like we couldn't cover the ground that they cover. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they can get into outlets that that we really just couldn't get into. But when you start out, you didn't have a distributor. No. So how? No. So so how did you manage then after that first? Um, I actually met. First I actually <laughs> met Charles Rob. I actually met Charles at the filling station, and he seen the logo and said, "Van, he asked my heart was going." I said, like, anything is tough. And then he just said, I'm thinking of taking on a 
Craft Cider, and we were talking to somebody else, but they weren't that really person. I went and met him, gave him a few samples, and we took it from there. Yeah. And it was a good time, you know, 2014. Was that that was probably 2012, yeah. was it? Or? 20, no, it, was 20, it was December 13 <coughs> that we got the 800 bottles launched. <laughs> but it took, we so it went for our first, for maybe first a year, year. Or, or maybe even longer than a year mm. we were doing it ourselves. But like it was Pat and Peter going out and and going to bars and going to off sales and like you just drive around the country everywhere really you know what I mean just to try to get it out there and then we did a lot of um, and how do you pitch something like that because they're, you know you walk into an off licence or somewhere and you know they've there's and most times you walk in the owner's not here yeah leave a sample you come back you come back <laughs> like I remember one weekend I drove right up all around the coast left you there in the morning to get them at a certain time and it's just picking you get to learn when to do it how to know when they're there or it's getting numbers and, and having a good sales pitch and, because and there's probably plenty of other products out there on the market the yeah. like what makes yours different you know yeah I mean, is that yeah. Yeah, well, I think the name our logo's got out there, and our names got out. Yeah. People like your logo know. is lovely. Who designed yeah. that logo? Uh, well, again, it was it was a collaborative thing that was sort of come up with together as a family. You know what I mean? We, we wanted the tree in it, you know, because of the apples and that, and um, and then we had a great uh, we had a great designer in that as well. You know that we're we're currently working with, and he's been absolutely fantastic, uh, Bay Studios. So um, just between all of us, you know, we collaboratively to come up then with this with this logo. Yeah, because yeah, as I said, like it was, uh, you know, a good time for you to come out in the market around the time when craft, mm-hmm. yeah. craft, everything has craft become was quite high then. Because yeah. craft still is quite it still high. Is, but that was it seemed to like it, it kicked really off then. Kicked so off it did, yeah. Then, yeah. So you were, it was, you know, perfect timing. And it seemed to be everybody was into their crafts and their local projects, like young pensioners, anybody of all ages. I think people were really, yeah, really interested, interested in different products and when trying out new the, things. The, even the gins and that as well, you know uh-huh. what I mean? The, the gin, the craft gins. Yeah, all the flavour gins and yeah. everything that are, yeah. yeah. That wasn't available, you know, 10 years ago. No. Yeah. No, no, definitely not. There was, yeah, yeah nothing like that. We all did seem to, and yeah, yeah little markets and everything like that, you know, yeah. they've, they've become popular. And you think, you know, We've kind of returned to a simpler way of life with COVID because we had to, I suppose we were forced to, but um, people are starting to look at what's available on their doorstep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You see, uh, on the do say, it's a tree say, everything has a cycle. Like I remember when I was say the, the food van coming to the house, like the grocery van had everything in it. Yeah, and the milkman. Yes, and, the, and that's all back out again. Well, that's exactly what you I know, was and thinking. Like people like, you know, we have different ones there that are doing that there and like they have plenty of customers and that's all back out again. Yeah. You know, and the wee country shop or the wee corner shop has come back to life again, which is good to see. Yeah, it is. Which great. is good to see, like you know, because every everybody needs a tone. I think we've been we've been sort of forced into a simpler way of yeah, life. Yeah. And but you also have obviously you have the Amazon thing, so people are buying online. Mm-hmm. Like the world yeah. has become a smaller place. Yeah, it really mm-hmm. has. It I really mean, has. you you'll be you'll you'll get people buying your products from. Yeah. Anywhere and everywhere, yeah. and uh, well, we'll, we'll you'll, you'll probably so. have a lot, di- lot of diaspora. You know, people from Armagh that are abroad that would want to try. This is it. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, it's a great opportunity. We were delighted, but we, we knew with COVID, you know, we had to do something, and it was, as I say, it was it was a doorway for us, you know, to get to get into these other markets that we knew, you know, we weren't going to get, especially with COVID, because the whole world, the whole country, every port was just closed down. So. You know, a lot of people now um, have sort of near got not so much reliant, but they've got used now to their home deliveries, you know, and everything been dropped off at their door. You know, that's not to say that they'll, they'll want to get back out there again. You know what I mean? We hope, you know, you'd want people to get back out there again because yeah. like everybody needs to turn, you know, the restaurants, the, fa- the delis, you know, the hotels, they, they all need to get opened up again and everybody needs to get a turn. So, you know, we know that's going to come back. Um, but um, you know we're sort of thinking you know as people now going to get to the stage well with we like it this way now you know where yeah. they are getting their home deliveries so I'd say an element of that will still exist yeah yeah will you um, yeah you'll put you'll be do- back doing both then I mean that's going to increase your mm-hmm. business a, a lot I would imagine because you're going to have all the online stuff and you know when the restaurants and pubs yeah. You know, people are still going to go out and people, people, are, are, people yeah. are still looking to get out people are yeah, people, people can't wait to get out of this stage yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they are they're, they're really I mean the thoughts of sitting down and having a 
I know. pint poured in front for of you. you. <laughs> poured for you, and actually nice sitting name. at a table. No, there's nothing like it in a lovely Crips, day. Can we go now? <laughs> <laughs> Is it past noon yet? <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's twelve o'clock somewhere in the world. It doesn't matter. Right. Can we go and take a little walk to the orchard can here? Can surely? Yes, come on ahead. Go there and explain about the frost treatment, okay? Oh yeah. yeah. Um, so the so orchards, I'd said to you earlier, Elaine, you know, the orchards play a big part of us for, you know, for the farm tours. Um, like we're doing the tours now, maybe about what, about four years now, I would say. Um, yeah, I mean, you do school tours, children and everything. Yeah, well, we have had schools in that out with us as well. It's just as part of their, their curriculum, maybe their cross-curriculum programme or whatever. But we've had children out with us. Uh, we're involved with Open Farm Weekend which is on in, in June obviously it's virtual this year as it was last year but previous to that like we would have had oh my goodness we would have had hundreds and hundreds of people even thousands coming to the farm gate you know looking in for open farm weekend but for the tours uh, we would have a lot of uh, international visitors coming in from from America and you know obviously COVID has has stopped that but we're hoping now for 22 that we'll have those back again and um, but it's a, it's a great experience. You know, do they book that? Um, do you have some sort of a booking system yeah. online where they can... No, we actually work through the tour operators. Okay. So we've contracts signed with those, uh, with them. And um, then we would have so many you know, tours in every week. And um, they get the whole orchard experience. So they would have an orchard walk. That's what we are doing here now. It's gorgeous. All the blossoms oh, are so the blossoms out. It's absolutely stunning now. Um, it's, it's one the smell of the... Delina, as you're walking yeah, I know, it's, it's one of the lovely. nicest times of the year, really. So they have the orchard walk and um, we go through, we explain the, all the, the plantations that we have because you can see there's the mature trees there. Yeah. The older trees there, but 50 years of age, those would be the ones now that Pat's father planted. And then we have uh, the smaller dwarf trees here. So it's the PGI Bramley apple. Um, but, you know, within those then we would have pollinators growing and sweet apples and, and the golden delicious the golden and that delicious, as well. Yeah. yeah, we have those growing in between them as well. But um, And then we have some grafting going on there too. So as you can see over there, you know, that's that tree there has been grafted. So there's actually a, a sweet tree been grafted within the Bramley. So that's fantastic for pollination. So that's, you've actually a Bramley... Um, the Bramley fruit there and the Goat and Delicious fruit all grown, you know, within the one within the one tree. Oh wow! I didn't know, know you could do that. Yeah. So Pat's father actually did that as well. Now Pat and Peter's going do to be doing that again. Do you have to have some sort of a um, science degree to figure out all this stuff out, or is this just learning from That's experience? All. No, it's learning from experience. Sure. Pat's father wouldn't have had a science degree all them years ago. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? He just he just knew what he was what he was doing really. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's absolutely fantastic. And then we have the bees then as well. That's for pollination. But you know what I mean from the tourist point of view. Like they, they just absolutely love it. You know, when there's there's a lot of questions, you get back and forth. There's a lot of banter and that going on. Especially if they're from a farming background themselves. You know what I mean? They're very curious how we farm to compared to how they farm. Um. So we go through the, this whole process with them. We show them. Um our processing plants we show them the cold storage facilities where we can store our fruit from harvest in september to june or july the following year we show them our apple cider vinegar room with a new plant in there we go through the whole process of making the apple cider vinegar and the health benefits and that attached to that yeah and um, of course then there's tasting and sampling involved as well which plays a big part of the tours they love to taste all the ciders and the apple juice and that and then as part of their package, if they want um, refreshments, we can offer refreshments. So they could have homemade apple pie, they can have homemade scones, or we do um, a beautiful VIP picnic lunch, which is supplied by the Yellow Door Deli there in Portadown. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, we get our lunches from them and um, we bring those in. So, no, it's, it's fantastic and it's lovely for us because you get to meet so many different people. Yeah. You know, and we're getting interest now all the time, you know, from different places. Um, which is great and hopefully now when things lift up um, maybe May, June time we'll hope to be opening again so we're going to have um, a booking page then on our website we did have one but obviously we had to take it down um, so we're hoping now that that'll be up again which yeah. means then that our local people you know um, can come and um, book a tour because 
we realise this year is just going to be staycation, so we're hoping to get a whole lot of people, maybe even from the north, you know, coming and staying, even within Armagh, and coming maybe and booking a tour or whatever. Yeah, because it is something that, you know, you, you, it's not something you'd think of for a day out, you know, generally, but it is, it's go- absolutely gorgeous here. Um, I'm noticing all your, the trees, have the stakes holding them up, is that um, because it, you just do that with all the young trees? Well, yeah. They're posted in when they're planted. It's yeah. simply to keep them upright so that the wind or the weather that we have here doesn't disrupt them or damage them. And speaking about the weather, yeah, you've um, there's been a bit of frost. Tell me, tell me what ha- happened with the frost we've had lately because the weather has been really changeable. It's been so different. Like it, it has been good for a while, and then all of a sudden we did get a head of frost there. So like, what happens then? Like Dad and I were out. Like the bloom still. Like the bloom's coming out now, but when the frost hit. It was still quite early, but the frost has attacked a lot of the bloom. So okay. Dad and I have went out and checked the bloom, and if there's a cluster there, and if you've one bloom that's still alive, you're quite lucky. <laughs> but I'll be honest, like we've checked a lot of bloom, and you can cut them in half, and you can just see that the wee pip inside is brown, brown if not black. Oh really? Yes, yeah, so and the frost has attacked. And what happens then? Is that the? Is that it that just simply means that there, there's no apple then in that blossom, so it means that batch there mightn't have that wee bundle on that tree mightn't have an apple on it. Okay, and did you find that with a lot of your trees? It's it's been quite prominent, yes, but at the same time too, that's our first bloom, and it's still early, so it could, we could be lucky enough. It's still quite early to tell if there's. A massive and there's nothing you can do. There's no way to cover them up or anything you like can't. that. You can't. It's the weather. That is yeah, and I thing. mean, there's we so can't. many trees. How many trees are in this orchard here? My goodness. About. Well, <laughs> Acreage-wise, there'll be about 30 acres. Wow. You know, so it covers quite a lot of ground. And when you think like those mature trees, if you look, they're laying the way they're spaced out. Yeah. There's such a large space between them, but that's the way they were planted years ago. Whereas if you look at these ones here, they're planted tighter together. Yeah. You know, so... There's obviously more trees in this area here that, that, you know, where the dwarf trees are compared to where the mature trees are. You know, so you're finding everything's changing. You know, there's there's new ways of growing things and that's that's farming for you. You know, like at the very the bottom of the orchard there, we have a, a fruit wall system where the, the apples are growing in like a vine. So things are changing really all the time. And, you know, this way here of growing, I think, is, is the way to go because the mature trees are... They are beautiful, you know, and how they look and, and they're producing amazing fruit. But when you think, like, we have the apple pickers coming in and they're harder to pick because there's a lot of work involved with them. Yeah. You know, so if you think, you know, if there's well, not they're a... Well, they're all very low to the ground. There's no climbing trees here, really. There's no there? climbing. No, no, we, we wouldn't encourage climbing at all, but we, we would use the ladders. But there not is Not like the work. orchard that I used to, up behind us, that we used to rob when we were kids. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we used to have to the climb the trees. <laughs> We used to have a lot now. Uh, children would have come into the bottom of the orchard and fogged, as we called it. But um, that has all died away. I don't know if it's because of they're too busy now and they the, these be iPads or whatever it is. I don't know. But um, no, we don't ha- we don't have any trouble like that now at the moment. But um, you know, the, as I said, the mature trees are absolutely stunning. You know, when they're formed, like they're trained in such a way that they're near enough coming down in like a number. Yeah, they sort of bow, they yeah. sort of, you know, bow over. Yeah. yeah, but there's still a lot of work involved. So when you think from the safety factor, you know, if it's a bit wet that morning and you've you've pickers, you know, up and down a ladder, you know, you don't have that here yeah. with these smaller trees. Everything's at hand height. Exactly. You I know, know, so they're easier picked, they're quicker picked. You know, so they love to get into um, they love to get into the young trees because they know they're going to do well at the yeah. young trees because they're, you know what I mean? They're they're going to fill their their apple bin quicker. How, so, see one of these one of these young these smaller trees now. How many apples would you t- tend to get on one of those in general? Doing some counting, now, I, mm, I wouldn't even know where to guess. You would, I I don't know if you no. would you get maybe could you get maybe a hundred more maybe yeah. Wow. It just depends because there's so many factors, you know what I mean? You have to think, like as Peter said there, the frost, like the this year alone, I think there was near a week's frost, which was, like we thought last year was bad, but this year definitely frost-wise was a whole lot worse. Um, you know, so you have all them things to take into account. Yeah. You know, is it a, is it a wet season? You have know, you had any sunny disastrous season? seasons? Disastrous seasons um, would have been maybe the heavy winds. What was it, Storm Alley? Oh. 
that caused a lot of like we had a such beautiful amazing fruit absolutely stunning fruit and um, of course storm alley come along and the huge big apples were just all on the floor of the orchard and so there's nothing you can do then there's not a thing we can do about those those do you have to pick them off the tree uh, all, our, all our fruits all hand picked, all hand -picked yeah. everything's hand picked there's no machinery involved everything's hand picked and um, but if they if they fall on the ground is that them if they're oh we they're, they're still picked from the ground but then they go into the waste bins yeah so those aren't the good bins that we can put into our stores yeah because the fruit's damaged so you can't afford to have damaged fruit in the stores because like one it rotten apple is going to affect the whole lot yeah. you know so you can't take that chance so once it hits the floor at all that's it it's gone it's into a waste bin so it's soul destroying when you think that there's beautiful huge big apples there on the ground yeah and you'd be so tempted to lift them and put them into a good bin but you just you can't take that yeah, chance because they're just going to ruin everything because they are ruined what about uh, birds and things like that do you find that is there a way of keeping so things like that away the bramleys it's, it's the sweet trees the birds would attack <laughs> but if you leave your apples on the trees too long the birds would eat them like we kind of harvest them in time but we don't really have that much bother with yes, we know we, we have no bother really you, with you birds you have very little wastage really with, with the birds um, you know, so from that point of view, we're grand, and as I say, then we have the, the the bees there as well, which is a which is a great help. But no, we would have no issue really with you know birds for for losses of fruit. Like it, it wouldn't be huge. Yeah. But like even walking through this now, you know, you can still smell it. You know, you can yeah. still smell the apple blossom, which is absolutely stunning. Yeah, it's uh, it is. It's gorgeous now. And when when do, when would the first actual apples start to appear on the trees you notice that i may not be able to see it now but that the petals would normally fall off the blossom right and that wee bit in the middle yeah it would normally i'll just show you here do you see that wee small bit beneath the paddle here this wee small circle bit there yeah that's the apple that's the apple that is meant so to be the apple the so that's what grows and forms into the apple then that would wee bit there beneath the, the petals yeah but just as I was explaining to you, like there is an example there, like that wee one there is dead because of the frosty, the way it's brown. Yeah, I can see that. So yeah, that's not going brown. to, so yeah. no, that's not going to produce not an apple. Form. No, no, it's dead. Yeah, well, hopefully not too many of no, them No, like it's just in, like, there's wee clusters there, like they haven't even opened up yet. So they'll be safe. Fingers crossed, and we're hoping there's not going to be another frost, like, but. Yeah, yeah. But you usually start to see the apple farming. What, June time? Aye. Yeah. yeah. Once the bloom, June. you know, once the bloom goes, you'll start to see the young apples starting to form in the trees. You see them starting to swell up a wee bit on, on the trees. And then, to, then the first thing then is the pickers come in, they, they take them off the trees. And what happens then? Uh, well, then is we put them into, um, we put them into our cold storage. We have cold storage facilities here where we store the fruit then for uh, processors. And, um, then we obviously use a lot of the fruit ourselves, you know, for our own products, for our, our cider products and our apple juice and the apple cider vinegar. So we use quite a lot of it as well. So we would be doing a lot of pressing at that time of the year too to build up our stock. So, you know, I would say from August, September, October, it's just would be very stressful months around here because you're just so busy between the harvest time and managing a team of workers and then trying to keep you know the products going well and getting the stock built up and you know getting them out to different places so it can be the i would say they're the, they're the the busiest and stressful times of the, of the year for us and then it all calms down again while you start getting the next crop going well this is that you usually get you know once january and february would be quiet months you know what i mean but it gives us then an opportunity you know the boys then would be out doing a lot of maintenance work in the orchards with a lot of pruning done then at that stage so and it's, it's kind of never ending oh it's it's a full no no it's oh, never it's 12 months yeah yeah i think people just think you know they're out there in, in the uh, orchards and the apples will look after themselves type of thing <laughs> but um like as you can see here the orchard's like a garden yeah you know it's completely mowed it's there's there's no weeds and they're you all know. in dead straight lines yeah you know that has to be maintained and looked after and if you didn't look after them, you know, we wouldn't have the quality of fruit that we have. You know, so it's um, it's very, very important, you know, for the apples themselves. But then, obviously, you know, they're going into our products, so yeah. they have to be right. 
Yeah, I mean, it's I suppose it's true what they say about about any product, about about anything you eat in a restaurant or anything you drink or anything. It all stems from the source product That's right, and the having material. quality and quality yeah. ingredients, which yeah. is the most important thing. But clearly, you love what you do. I mean, this is obviously a labour of love. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. I know or maybe not always, but <laughs> <laughs> no, we're very, very passionate about what we do. You know, we love what we do. It's definitely uh, it's a labour of love. Like we've been doing this for years. You know, you would I'm, never envision yourself doing anything else. Oh no, I can't imagine us ever doing ever anything else. Like we've built this business up now. You know, and through blood, sweat and tears, you know, at the start. Like for anybody starting up a new business, it's very, it's hard and it's daunting and it's worrying. You know, so we've got it to the stage now where people know us, you know, and they know the brand, they know the logo and they know the family, you know. So they know what the quality that they're getting and we we'll just want to keep going with that. Um, has it become more popular? Um, I would say yes that it has. I suppose when, you know, when all I can remember is, you know, I suppose... <laughs> When you're when you're younger than you should be, um, yeah. drinking cider <laughs> in a field, <laughs> I probably shouldn't be saying that. In case my kids you're letting all your secrets out. <laughs> <laughs> that was the thing back um, many years ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what cider was seen as. I know. But, and um, funny, those are the stories that we've heard from yeah. from different people. You know, they remembered in when they were at college and school and one thing or another, and that maybe this big huge bottle of cider that they had <laughs> maybe. S- S- all swigging out of swigging out of and drinking down some field but um, Peter's looking horrified here <laughs> <laughs> we're a different generation <laughs> but we would always say to people like some people would say oh no no, I've had a bad experience with cider because of that yeah exactly me you know, and we would always say well, well just try it you yeah. know try it and see what you think it's, it's completely different now and this is a craft you know compared to what you, what you were drinking <laughs> exactly you know so they do be quite surprised yeah. you know and we normally find that they do make a purchase <laughs> <laughs> They've got back on. <laughs> okay. Um, that's great. That's the cold storage facilities that I was telling you about there early in. Yeah. That's where the fruit's stored. So they're currently in there now at the moment. So that's last year's fruit still in storage. Really? Yeah. Do you want to go over and look and open yeah. one of the hatches there, just? Yeah, so that fruit's in there from September. And you think this is, well, we're coming now into May. You know, when they're still in there and they're still as good as the day they went in. I didn't think that they could last that long. Yeah, well, well, well if they're properly looked after. If they're properly looked after and, and there's maintained. no bad apple yeah. in the bu- in the batch. Yeah, well, that's why we're so, um, you know what I mean, we're so rigorous with it and we keep an eye on the workers and that because we can't afford for them to put a rotten apple in a bin. Does it have to but be like, see. do they have to have like certain... You know, air tightness or something like that, or yeah. Well, those are all safe. Have, do they have to have you know a certain temperature? And oh, they're they're sitting at around four degrees, so they are. And we are monitoring the ethylene and the carbon dioxide inside the stores, yeah. well, just to keep them as long as possible, really, until they're ready to be sold on. Yeah, absolutely. But it's it's like we were saying down there, the work that we're putting into the orchards all year round. If you're putting in good fruit the last longer like mum said you wouldn't put what was on the ground into the stores you wouldn't put waste into your stores yeah so yeah it was lovely lovely speaking to you and learning all about oh, um, your wonderful product um, I can't wait to <laughs> to try some of your cider and definitely get some of that vinegar as well yeah yeah well, thanks very much no um, problem Catherine Elaine, and you're, Peter. Very, you're very very welcome and hopefully now when things open up again um You'll be able to get a come out and, and a chance to visit and maybe get a wee tour in that bend as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Definitely, yeah. 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 No, but thanks a million. Thanks, okay. Thank you. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with the McKeevers as much as I did. Since we spoke, there was a lot more cold and frosty weather, so hopefully the crop wasn't affected too badly by all of that. Make sure to keep getting all of your news from Arma I and I hope you join us next time for our podcast.